G'day, g'day. It's Nick here, and uh, today we're actually out on the road, uh, driving from caravan to caravan park as part of our school holiday program, taking the wildlife around the place and teaching people. When we came across this poor girl here, spotted her, we swung a U turn, turned around, and um, obviously there's something in the pouch. So, in today's video, we're going to talk about why it's important to check the pouches of marsupials on the road and how you go about it. So, stick around, guys. This is something that every Australian should know. So the first thing when it comes to checking any animal, uh, just like first aid, is safety. And by this I mean human safety. You know, it, it, it's fantastic to want to help wildlife, but if you get skittled by a car looking after one animal, then you're not going to help any more animals, are you? So, you know, you'll make sure you're pulled over safely. Uh, if it's a busy place or if people can't see you, put your hazard lights on. Make sure it is safe to stop before you do so. Once you do, the first thing you want to do is approach the animal and basically assess whether it's alive or not. Uh, obviously this girl here isn't, it's you know, well past midday, she's been here all day I'd say. Uh, there's already a few flies and things hanging around her. But if it is, um, at this point might be a good idea to call a wildlife carer. If at any point during this you're not sure what to do, call a wildlife carer. There's great resources out there, whether it's Wildlife Victoria, WIRES, local groups, things like this, uh, and they can talk you what to do. Uh, if it's already well and truly deceased, we can move on to checking things. Now, the first step, you want to find out if it's a male or a female. Obviously, this girl here is a girl. She's a, a female. She's got a pouch with something in there. Uh, but if it's a male, when it comes to all of our marsupials, it'll be pretty obvious. They've got fairly noticeable external testicles. Uh, you're going to be able to tell if it's a boy. Um, if it's a boy and is well and truly deceased, you can finish things there. What you want to do is basically drag them well off the side of the road where carrion eaters, eagles, things like this aren't going to get hit by a car while they're feeding. If you can't do that, if you can mark the carcass with um, spray paint or something like this so that any other carer who drives past knows that that animal's been checked. If it is a girl, this is when we've got to have a look. So in this one here, we've obviously got a, a little joey. Uh, I'm fortunate that I've got a, a couple of spare pillowcases in the car. Uh, in case any of the reptiles today had an accident in their bag. So this is a washed bag that uh, was sort of a plan B. But the first thing we want to do, she's well and truly deceased. Uh, a lot of people do recommend if you can just get a bit of a smell of mum on the bag. Now, if we have a look down at this pouch here, you can see that this girl is quite a little joey. Uh, what we call sort of velvet. It still doesn't have much hair. It's just starting to grow it. Now, you don't want to just go pulling a joey out of the pouch. You see, uh, marsupials basically latch onto a pouch and as that teat sort of swells, they can be stuck. So if you can gently reach around, if they come out, basically you can then pop them in a, a pillowcase, a bag, take them in the car, keep them somewhere warm up against your body. If they're not, if they are stuck to that teat, the last thing you wanna do is pull them off. You could damage their mouth, which could reduce the chances of them, say, taking to a bottle once they get to a wildlife carer. So if they're stuck to that teat, you've got two choices from here. You can either uh, pick up the whole carcass, put it in the car, back of the ute, something like this, and take the whole mother into a wildlife carer. They can deal with it there. Um, some carers do talk about, you know, basically snipping the teat, which sounds a bit gruesome, but it means you're not pulling that teat out of the mouth. It'll reduce in size and the carer can deal with it then. And again, if unsure, ring a wildlife carer, they will tell you what to do from here. But at this size, this guy's well and truly uh, off the teat. He's a little male here. Poor little guy. I'm sorry. Little swamp wallaby Joey. When we're rescuing animals, we don't want to play with them. We don't want to mess with them. We don't want to show them off to anybody, take photos. We want to get them straight into something warm, dark, uh, and basically keep them as stress-free as possible. So in the case of something like this guy, he's only got some fur, basically under a human shirt against your body is a great way to do it. They can hear a heartbeat, they can feel body warmth, that will keep him calm until we can get off, off to a carer. Now, if you find a female and there is no Joey in this pouch, this doesn't mean things are over there. If you have a look inside the, the pouch, and she's already started to bloat up a little bit, basically you wanna look for the teats. Just like any other mammal, uh, they've all got teats, they feed their babies milk. And in the case of kangaroos, marsupials in general, if they've got one teat that's longer than the other, it means there is a good chance that there was a joey in here. She's feeding something that has either been thrown from the pouch when she's been hit by the car, or it survived the impact and made a break for it. Now, if, if it's straight away around, you can you know, see it, maybe you can catch it, and again, pop it in a bag, take it to a carer. Uh, if not, 
next step as always ring the wildlife carer explain this is a situation i've got a, a, a deceased female wallaby uh, she's got one teeth longer than the other does she have a baby here is there somebody that could come and help me look so yeah when we assess that you'll be able to tell one teeth longer than the other um if they, they're both the same again treat as a male basically spray paint it or move it well off the side of the road the last thing that's really important to mention or last couple of things is um we cannot hang on to these babies, okay? Uh, we have to get baby marsupials or wildlife, injured wildlife in general into wildlife carers' hands as soon as possible. Even myself, as, as somebody who's got permits to keep a lot of native animals, I can't give this guy home. It's a different set of skills, it's a different set of permits, and for the untrained person, the chances of this guy surviving aren't very good. So we wanna get straight to a carer, and on top of that, we don't ever wanna, and I know it's tempting, we don't wanna offer them food or water, unless, we have rang that wildlife carer and they've said to do so for some reason. We leave these decisions to the experts, guys. It's great to want to help, but the experts make the calls. So we don't offer them food or water. We don't keep them at home for the night. We don't, you know, show them off to the kids for a couple of days. Put them in the dark, nice and warm, nice and quiet, straight in the car, straight off to wildlife carer. Or if you can't get on a wildlife carer, the nearest vet in the closest town, something like this. So we're gonna drag this girl off. I don't have any spray paint here, but we're on a fairly remote road. So I'll drag her well and truly off into the bush. Um, but hopefully no other animal's gonna come and feed on poor mum here. We'll get this poor little boy off to a wildlife carer and, and see how things go from here. So it's been over a week since we found this little guy and uh, he's been in the wonderful care of a local wildlife carer. He's been you know, kind enough to let us come and visit him. And uh, poor little bloke's been named Nick after me. So what do you know? But this guy here is, yeah, he's growing well. He, he's put on 70 plus grams. He's growing his fur. He's doing everything right. And hopefully one day he'll be, you know, a, a big buck wallaby out in the bush having baby wallabies like he's supposed to. But this is the best case scenario. So the sad reality is when you are rescuing these animals, Sometimes they're simply too small to survive. They go into wildlife care and, and they don't make it, or their injuries are too great. And in this situation, often all that we can do is basically put an end to these animals suffering. The issue with this is we don't want you, if you're rescuing these animals, to look at this as a loss. You have still done a good deed. The alternative was this poor wallaby, that you know joey, whatever, sitting in a pouch in the sun dying over the course of a couple of days so it's not always you know bubbles and rainbows and happy endings like this guy here it's important regardless you've done a great thing and like i said those points that we mentioned earlier in the video don't hang on to these guys the sooner you get them into care the sooner you're going to have you know the more likely you're going to have a good outcome for these guys have them back out in the bush where they belong and have happy endings for everybody so there you go that's you know my experience with finding this guy in the pouch, how you could maybe do it if you're in the same situation and why it's important. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something from it today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, all that kind of stuff. But between now and then, as always guys, be nice to wildlife, have a good one and take care.